kits, I think, are the way to go because you don't have that cookie cut. Actually, fiberglassing, painting, uh, if you roll it forward, just kind of press it like this. Hard as a brick bed for a leading edge. One last thing on tip blocks is that you want to cut outside Welcome the line. Welcome to Cougar Build Part 8, the Formers. We are on step 29 in the manual. Come back. This is Part 9 of the Sick Cougar Build. This is a Sick Cobra. It's the 20 size version. Welcome back. What do you think? Uh, I took it off the board, the turtle deck that is, stuck the rudder on it and sat it on here just to see what it's going to look like. And it's looking pretty good. So let's get back to where we were. Well, last time you've seen it pinned to the board. I got my line that's marked out here. It was all nice and straight. And where I pinched it right here, with the pins, it, it drew it in against the wood block, okay? Because I'm the, the shape that I sanded it in wasn't exactly perfect, it was a little bit small, so I drew it in anyways, knowing in advance that I'd have to put some filler on it. And since I brought up filler, we're gonna go first into a little bit of that. I'm not going to show you on this, but I'll show you on something else on basically how I do that. So let me get rid of the fuselage, uh, get things squared away, and I will bring out something to uh, show you how to do a little bit of filling. And what I show you will basically carry into what we'll be doing on the rest of the fuselage, and I'll be showing that also. But this is kind of a heads up type of thing so let me get on with it I have all my stuff laid out for you to, to see and this will be our test project it's not really a test project it is an actual project uh, what this is is a couple of pieces of basswood carved out into the shape of a cowl and a friend of mine in, the, in our club needs a fiberglass cowl so he asked me if I would make him a fiberglass cowl out of this basswood plug. And it is rough, it was roughed in, a lot of saw marks, but he says it's the, it's the shape that he wants, so I'm gonna have to take it as that. It's very rough at the bottom here. You see band saw marks, I don't know if you can see that or not. They're light and dark hashes in there. I've already sanded the corners pretty much the way they should be. A little bit more to do on here, it looks like, but the top, you can see some fillers already in there. And what I'm gonna show you is basically how I fill something like this. This is really rough right here. And, uh, but I think we'll start uh, right here, because these are, these are, these are pretty deep. <laughs> Having problems talking today. And they will show the the filler very, very well, I believe, so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'll set that to the side. Let me talk about the things that I'm going to use. And out front here, you can see, I got a little pad of sandpaper here. This is kind of fine. This is, this is 320, that'll be my final uh, sanding stuff. And 80 grit to knock it down, 220 to get it to shape. 320 to make it smooth, okay? Uh, the resin I'm gonna use. I don't use spackling compound, even though I do on occasion, if it's like a balsa chip and I'm using Monocoat, then it doesn't matter. But I use a Class B polyester resin, and a Class B has a, a, a wax built into it, so when it dries, it feels smooth, and it's not sticky. If you don't get a Class B, you're getting a laminating resin and that will always stay tacky. And what I, from what I understand, the difference is that the wax, when you lay down the, the resin, the wax comes to the surface, makes a seal on the top of the surface of the polyester resin. And when it seals off the air from the resin, it gets rid of all the stickiness and it dries thoroughly. That's what I'm told. Whether it's true or not, if you know different, let me know and I'll 
advise everybody else, but as far as I know, that's the way it works. Okay, that's our resin. Oh, by the way, this is the Bondo brand. I used to use, uh, many years ago, I used to use KMB. And as everybody knows, KMB is out of business, long gone. So I switched over to SIG. Well, SIG got astronomically priced. Uh, can this size, like 30 bucks. And for half of that, you can get a can of the Bondo from anywhere, hardware store, uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever. And it's just this fiberglass renison on here. And it comes with its own little tuba hardener. But I buy hardener separate, so I put it in this, like a CA bottle. I buy this at the hobby shop. Whole buck and a half for the bottle and top. And I put it in here, and it just makes it easier to drip it out or whatever. It just makes it more handy. Uh, micro balloons. You got to have micro balloons. And this is not the Top Flight brand because the Top Flight is white. I buy mine in bulk. This was a lot fuller. Uh, they call these, well, it says micro balloons, hollow phenolic resin spheres. Um, I bought this from fiberglass supply. It didn't cost very much. Oh, there's a hole in it too. I have to put it in a different bag. And if you get a bag like that, it pretty much seems like it lasts you forever. So that's the way I, I get that. Um, to go with the resin, because the Bondo is a little thicker, the Bondo resin is a little thicker than the SIG resin or the KMB for that matter. And what I found is you need to thin it just a little, little bit to make it flow a little better. And for that, you use styrene monomer. It's, it's a thinner, basically. It says uh, on the can, it says styrene reducer thinner for polyester resins and gel coats. Uh, to use by 5% to 10% by volume, adding styrene can slow the cure, cure time of your resin or gel coat and it does a little bit but not noticeably uh, from when i talked to other guys uh, that use this or use the bondo brand who switched also and that's where i actually got it from is i was told to just go to this and uh, they say it's 20 to 1 ratio so if you, if you count in ounces it'd be one ounce of the styrene to 20 of the resin. And when I mix it up, I don't mix up a lot. So I only put a, like a drip or two <laughs> for like, uh, see I usually mix up when I'm doing something small, I'm about 25 cc and maybe I'll put couple of drips in there with of the resin sometimes more uh, medicine cups you can buy these pretty much anywhere <clears throat> excuse me stir sticks and spatula type sticks stir stick mix it up with and you need a spreader I use these big spreaders. You can buy these at any automotive store, uh, Walmart, uh, you name it. And what I do is I'll get one of those and I'll cut them up into different sizes for different things. Um, these I usually use when I'm getting the excess off of wings. When I'm glassing a whole wing, I take the excess off with usually a smaller one because I can follow the contours better with a small one. But on here, what I did is I smeared a whole bunch of micro balloon polyester, re polyester resin mix filler, basically. I put a gob of it on here and took this and used it like a straight edge, like that, and just brought it up to the top and then brought it back down. Both sides kind of did it loosely. I didn't try to get it perfect. Because what I like to do is always, well, you've seen through the whole video, is I like to go and sand back to my project. So it was built up a little bit extra. 
took a sanding block and sanded it back to the plastic and the balsa. Pretty simple stuff and it and it's nice and smooth. When I when I glass over the top of this, you'll never even know it's there. It won't even cause a ripple or anything, so just thought I'd mention that. Get this out of the way, put this over here, and let's get started on this real quick. Sooner I get done, the quicker I can mount that deck. Whoa, that's half off the table. Uh oh. Yeah, it is on there. Now it's going to take a little force. Give me a moment. All right, I'm back now. Cap is loose. <clears throat> I don't know what was holding it on. Might be a little bit of goop in there. But, all right. Uh, I'm probably going to go a little bit more than 25 cc. Maybe I'll go with five. Or is it 2.5 cc is what I'm trying to say, not 25. My mistake. 5 cc. Now that I got that in there, I will go with my styrene monomer. Oh, I forgot I left the metal tab in there. Get a pair of side cutters. It has this little plastic lid on the inside and I tend to put that back on because this stuff will evaporate. Okay. And I'll just drip that in. I'll put about five, six drops in there. An eyedropper would be ideal for this situation. But I don't need to thin it too awfully much. That's about seven or eight drops, plus whatever's on the stick. Not very scientific, is it? But you don't have to be. Okay. We don't need this and this. We'll put the top back on. That off to the side. And now I'll mix in my micro balloons. The micro balloons, put this off the edge so it don't stick to nothing. Um, these brown ones are kind of clumpy because uh, it, it, they've been sitting around a while. They gained probably just a little bit of moisture enough to make them stick. But I don't worry about that too much. And what I do is just start piling it in. That little bit of resin goes a long ways in mixing micro balloons. Or mixing your filler. It's messy. Little micro balloon dust goes flying all over the place. But you've seen how much I put in there. And it's still way too soupy to be used as a filler. See? You want to kind of like uh, uh, the plaster type spackling compound when when it's done, nope, oh, I'm using the wrong thing here. When you're done uh, mixing it together, you want it to about that consistency. Just little bits at a time. I go a couple of heaping at a time just to get things going. It's getting very close to where I want it. It's very close right now. I'm going to scoop up what's left on my table and dump it in there. I think that'll be good enough. And I did dust my table off so there's no foreign matter in here like dirt or sawdust or anything like that. All right, mix that in real good. It's gonna stiffen up just a little bit. You don't have to worry about it getting, if you get it too stiff, 
maybe just a little bit too stiff. When you put the catalyst in it, when you mix the catalyst in it, it will loosen it up at just that little bit, so you're usually okay. And the consistency here is just about right. Let me pull up a chunk here. It's still maybe a little runnier than I like. And the runnier it is, the harder it gets. A little bit harder to sand. I mean, it's not real hard to sand in the first place, but it makes it a little bit harder to sand. Uh, and if you make it too thick, it has a hard time sticking to whatever surface you're trying to apply it to. So I don't advise going too much more than this right there. Okay. All right, now we got it thoroughly mixed. I'm gonna put a few drops of uh, catalyst in here. I'm only putting in about five drops. They say uh, 10 to 12 drops per ounce. Now, get your spatula. I'm gonna use this one. Get rid of the micro balloons here. And let's see, I'm gonna use the bigger spatula. Get this out of the way. This one to apply. And I'm just gonna put a bunch right on the bottom. Just like that. I want to fill in all the grooves all the way to the bottom, so I'm going to put some all the way to here. He didn't tell me how much of this cowl he was going to actually use, but he did have a black line right here. So I'm suspecting that from here forward is going to be his actual cowl. But it's possible he could all, go all the way to the back, but I don't know. He wasn't that uh, technical. He just says, this is what I want. Can you make it? So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, that looks like plenty. Move this out of the way. Hang that over the edge. Take my spreader. And just spread it over top of the whole surface. about like that I have some extra so I'm gonna go over top of this again uh, on this seam the top block was a little higher than the bottom block so and this is the top this is the bottom so this will level that out and I can see daylight when I set my spreader down like this I can see daylight along this line so this is where I'm gonna apply it you get a few minutes working time Take it right to the, the edge. That looks pretty good. Use a little bit more. I like that. So we got on the top here. That feels pretty smooth, but I'm gonna add a little bit more anyway. It 
starting to dry up on me. See the way it's caking up? That's how I can tell it's going to dry. All right, all done. Now I'll spin it around for you so you can see. I went ahead and mixed up a little more and did all four sides. I figured why, why not? I was in the middle of it, so just get it done. Let me clean up this mess, uh, and I'll be back in a moment. I was just thinking, uh, you probably are wondering, what am I going to use to clean this up with? It's, it's not hard to figure out, really, but I use acetone, put it on a rag, clean up my spatula so it doesn't get all hard and stuff so I have to sand these two I don't like doing that but acetone takes it off in a hurry wipes up real good just like that no muss no fuss got a little on my hands just kind of wipe that off too And a couple of little drips on the bench. And you can't forget to clean your your spreaders off. Kind of important to clean up all your your tools. I remember when I was a kid, I would never clean up after myself and. <laughs> Dad would come up out of the basement from the workshop and says, "You left epoxy all over t all over my stir sticks. Now you got to clean them up." I said, "Sure, in a minute." Well, by that time I got whacked across the head and I was down there cleaning up. <laughs> so, a few times like that, I learned it's good to clean up your stuff before you you go on to something something else <laughs> all right that's it nice and clean good to go all right let me move things around and we'll get back to it it's been about uh, 48 hours I had some unexpected things come up so I couldn't get to it right away but I've been sanding on this thing for maybe about 15 20 minutes like I said I uh, used the 80 grit to knock it down then I went to the 220 I had some little pads of sandpaper that I smoothed out the edges with it came out pretty nice well I wanted to bring you in a little closer so you can see a little better the saw marks you can see right here in the dark that's where the saw went a little deep and the light of course is where it is a little high and everywhere else <laughs> is just filler um, it looks like the saw blade on these flatter surfaces might have been bowing to the inside because these are kind of deep but it's nice and level and I'll show you all the sides here and I didn't go all the way down I didn't want to waste your time and show you things that I'm going to show later on anyways uh, okay the bottom the other side and there's a cut line where the two blocks meet right here in the top and where is it on the bottom right here kind of runs on a sort of an angle up but down here is was a little lower for some reason his blocks weren't the same size and he just kind of filled them in and I had to level that out so that's why there's so much down here and uh, far less at the top all right put this away and we'll get back to the cougar and see how far we can go there back to the cougar I have my eighth inch square string stringers basically that go underneath the turtle deck and the canopy uh, what has to be done now 
I would have to say is to make the make sure that everything is straight and I do have a center line drawn on here and everything has been straightened to that center line and what I'd like to do though is not uh, sanding can be imperfect and it looks right but when you lay the lines out it may not be quite exact um, so you might have to go back and sand your edges a little bit to make the turtle deck look straight even though it is straight on the center line if the sanding's not the same on both sides is what I'm trying to say if the sandings aren't sanding isn't the same on both sides you might have to go back and sand them to be more identical on both sides and that's what those lines are that go around so I can see how accurate they are you might find you you might have a problem there line up your canopy your turtle deck and since this is a nice assembly when you set it on the line it's straight and you don't have to worry about it too much the canopy is the only thing you need to make sure is straight and that's last but I put the canopy on there to get an overall look and look right down the fuselage and you can see if it looks you know kinda cockeyed a little bit and you can adjust it alright what I did so I went around the turtle deck with a pencil and marked a line where I need to put uh, my uh, stringers and I marked out one of these stringers I don't know which one it is it looks like this one and I have little lines on here where I need to cut it which is no big deal you just lay it out there and find out how long it has to be and then you cut it off that way when you lay it in there it's gonna be the right length uh, as far as the lines go go back to the lines here the lines are on the outside of the plastic you got to remember it's on the outside of the plastic so you take the width of the plastic the thickness of the plastic and then you draw another line inside of your line and that's where you lay your stringer if you lay it on the line then you're gonna be puckered out on your your turtle deck and you don't want that you want that thing just to sit right on there and slide right over top of these um, stringers and you may also find you're gonna have to trim a little bit off the stringer because everything slopes in on an angle and these are square so you're gonna have to take the squareness out just a little bit uh, 80 grit sandpaper rub it on there a few times and that'll that'll knock it off and then it'll slip slide right on there okay with that being said uh, I'm going to remove all this stuff get rid of the canopy don't need that for a while turtle deck I don't need this for a little while uh, I'm gonna set this behind me for now and I have a mark at the very back where the balsa part of the, the vertical stabilizer ends or starts I guess you could say and up here is a line in front of the turtle deck I'm gonna remeasure these and uh, I don't remember how thick that was. It's, I know it's really super thin. I don't know. Uh, well, that's almost a 64th. So, I'm going to remark these a 64th in. Okay, I'll just use the this line now I have to go down to this end of the ruler okay now I started my mark I know you can't see it but it's just a little tiny tick mark I'm gonna go all the way down and all the way around and mark that out and when I get that done I'll be back and we'll proceed you can probably see the lines little bit even though the angle is a little funny it's about the best I can do for you I'm kind of sorry about that but I have lines I don't know if you can see them or not on my ball so I'm gonna take a little razor saw and just cut on those lines and cut cut this uh, stringer this 
to the size I really want it. The sides, the stringers that go up the sides are going to be just a little bit long. And I'm doing that kind of on purpose. That's one. Get the other one here. There we go. Got my little marks on there. Okay. Gonna use CA glue on this because it's quicker and it's a little more handy. And I don't have to sand any of this, really. So I'm just gonna kinda put little, little dots on it all the way up just so it sticks. Then I'll lay a bead down it, a quick set to make it stay permanent. All right, start down here at the rudder end. Line up my marks. Oh, that went a little wide. There it is. Okay, that's one. Get lined up. All right. Stuck on there. Now I'll grab the turtle deck again. See how well I did. Not too bad. It's going to be on the inside once I trim it off. Because the angle of the of the square isn't correct yet. Line up my back part, which is real good. I can feel it hitting the rudder. Okay. Now what I do is I just take the sandpaper and just cut an angle in it. I'm not too worried about gouging the wood on the outside because I'm going to have filler on, on this edge. I might have to use a knife on that. Find myself a knife. I'm going to trim the angle in. I'm just going to cut just a little bit off. Okay, that's looking good. Trim some more on this side. All right, while I'm trimming, I'm gonna shut the camera off for a little bit and I'm gonna trim this other side like I did this. I'm gonna keep going until it fits. So when I get it to fit, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I got the two on there and it fits. 
This one's just kind of sitting in there for the moment. I'll just throw that in like that. You can see how it just drops on real good. And lines up with my little dot in the back. Still lines up in the front. What I have to do is put the little piece on in the front real quick. And I will tack this one in. More than likely, I'm going to have to do some finagling with it once it's glued. Hopefully not. Kind of sits in front of everything. Oh, come on. Something like that, right there. Stick this thing on there. One more time. See what I have. Oh yeah, sitting on there. It's up to my dot, everything is good. I have a square to square up my vertical stabilizer. And it's gonna have to be moved just a hair. It's not sitting down flush or something. Oh, got some stuff in the way here. Should get my big one. My big square with the chunk cut out of the corner. Yeah, it's leaning just a tad. I can take care of that with a little tape. Yeah, pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'll run some segment around here and some five minute epoxy, well probably some 15 minute epoxy on the back. I want it to set a little longer and the longer the setting on the epoxy, let's say five minute, it doesn't penetrate the wood as far as 30 minute. And I don't have 30 minute, oh yes I do have 30 minute, so I'm probably going to use 30 minute on the, on the, the wood blocks back here. and uh, segment around here because I just like the way that acet it's an acetate type uh, a bond here and it melts into the plastic and in turn glues hard to the wood and that thing will never come off. So let me get some 30 minute epoxy mixed up and I'll be right back. Got my mixing cup got my resin and my hardener and I don't really know exactly how much I'm gonna mix up uh, got my stir stick but I think oh you know, probably about 2.5 milliliters or so uh, should be enough quite a bit actually I want it to get all up underneath the vertical stabilizer in the blocks fill up all the holes and stuff and and ooze out the sides so I'm gonna mix up quite a bit and that that looks pretty close right there Put the cap back on. And mix it up really good. Stuff kind of stinks. <laughs> Has a weird smell to it. But you want to mix your epoxy thoroughly. You'll know when it's all bubbles and it blends into one color pretty much because they're kind of two different colors, two different shades. That looks about right. Oh, and I forgot to uh, tack down my, my stringer so I'll put in some CA nice bead on the inside all the way around last thing I needed to have uh, this come apart on me it would 
not be good. <laughs> That should just about do it. A little bit up front here. All right. Now, what I think I will do is, uh, hmm. Well, I'll go around the outside of the stringers with the with the Sigment. Kind of apply it high on the stringer, and let it drip down. And I'll put this on all the way around. Not a big deal. Easy to do. And one more side. Try to keep my hands steady. But I'm going to put on a good amount. Because when I push that, that turtle deck down, I want it to ooze out. Okay, I'll put on my 30 minute. And I'm going to put quite a bit on here. So when I squeeze her down, it's going to, it's going to come out all over the place. But for me, that's a good sign when it comes out. Then I know that every place that needs to have glue has glue. No place else for it to go but out. Nice, generous amount. Front to the back of the vertical stabilizer assembly. Just a bit more. I want to make sure there's plenty there. That ought to do it. Now I'm going to run the segment around the inside of the turtle deck. That way I know glue, the glue is going to be on both the stringer and the turtle deck. There won't be any gaps and when it, when it finally, when gravity takes over the glue is going to run down and it's going to connect to the the wood and whatever I have on there on the stringer will be pushed down and seal up around the bottom of the turtle deck. And I'm putting a generous portion in there. As I'm putting it in there, I, it's, it's slowly dripping towards the top of the turtle deck. It's not going to hurt nothing. It's just the excess. When I flip it over and put it down, all that's going to going to drop. All right. Looks pretty good. straight on the spot in the front put it on the dot on the back press it down real well so the glue starts oozing out and it's coming out all over the place grab my paper towels and start wiping it get all the excess off the stigma that's oozing out a little bit along the sides but not too bad it's around the vertical stabilizers or the vertical stabilizer that the glue is flowing out the most. That's about it for this paper towel. Now I'm going to grab my denatured alcohol over here. Need a paper towel. <clears throat> Let's 
see how far I can go here. Pretty much cleaned up. Cap everything off. Get some masking tape over here. And I'll seal her down. Start with the front. Go to the middle. Right here in front of the dorsal. That looks pretty good. Move this out of my way. Okay, now for the fun part. Since I put 30 minutes on here, I got time to play around. So what I'm gonna do is grab it with some masking tape. And use this to pull the vertical stab exactly straight up and down. And it don't take much. It, it's just barely any pressure on there at all. Might need just a hair more. Double check both directions. Outstanding. All right, that should do it. Well, that's about as far as I can go for now. Uh, I should let this sit for 24 hours and cure real well before I start moving it around and things. What I was hoping to get to was installing this little guy right here. Remember I talked about this for the rudder and uh, looks like I'm not gonna get to it in this video. So it'll have to be the next one, <laughs> part C of the turtle deck or part 15. I'm not sure which way it's gonna go. Uh, it'll probably be part 15 because we'll be dealing with something other than the turtle deck. We might do a little bit of filling around the edge here just to show you that. Uh, let's see. I can't put the canopy on, like I said, but I can put the wood on there, but yeah, that's neither here nor there. It's not a necessary thing, but the rudder part is the most interesting, I think. Uh, there's several ways to do it. I had uh, a watcher ask me about the rudder system and I'd like to show it but it's gonna have to wait one more video uh, so I'm gonna check the squareness of the vertical stabilizer here in a minute I'm sure it's fine because I just checked it a few minutes ago and it, it seems to be pretty pretty solid right now but I'd like to let it sit overnight because Air can't get inside of here to help cure the glue 
that's up underneath the turtle deck. So just for safety reasons, I'm gonna let it sit. I will start on this video tomorrow because <laughs> there's so many unexpected things that came up between last video and this video that just threw my whole timetable completely out of whack. So hopefully that's over with and I can finish this because I just need something new to fly. <laughs> so as I said, that's all for the, this video and uh, hope to see you on the next one. For now, have a good one.